you can call me Javi. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm from Chile and I really like to do uh, a lot of things. So to begin, uh, I want to introduce which type of work I do. Uh, I'm a consultant. So what does that mean? Everything depends. And we usually go to clients that aren't using agile methodologies, mostly waterfall, and they want to change that or migrate their own system to new platforms that can respond in a custom way. I work for Tatworks, so we sell a lot of agile uh, projects. My team is called Sapayo or Pumpkin. That's why you see this big pump in the ocean our client was uh, it is a big real estate company that is present in a few countries in Latin America I'm from Chile as I said before that is small and long country that you see here and just in Chile our client has more than 20 shopping centers in Chile when you think about real estate you usually doesn't come up to your mind like a, a shopping mall or shopping center but it is a big market for it because they rent those stores the task was kind of easy in a certain way because they were using some all different system for everything like regular mail for notifications or communications like oh here's your bill of water so i mail you uh, whatsapp for emergencies for example no water in the store or uh, i don't know uh, i need some internet and register the cells in an excel sheet and mailing it and many more if you think about it, okay a mall with 200 stores okay no problem but remember, you have this system for each mall in the whole country, even different countries. And if you need to do some data analysis, well, good luck checking those spreadsheets and cross them. Not very good. Also, we were the first Agile team, so we decided to do a event storming session with the domain expert and we identify some key points using this strategic modeling where we define our bounded context using for sure ubiquitous language in that way we can communicate with the business people the technical team and the domain experts in order to have these nice contact maps that brings to life our roadmap and our new architecture strategy we decide to use our very well known clean architecture from uh, Uncle Bob. I know that many of you already know uh, this person. <laughs> Why we choose that is because, as you can see here, is independent from the framework, is testable, independent from the UI, from the DBD, more tolerant to changes, reusable, maintainable. And as I said before, our client was a uh, taking some decisions uh, in terms of what system we, we can use in the very last minute. So this architecture works perfectly with those delay decisions. One of the decisions that uh, or that we needed to took was the framework migration. We were using a lot of uh, Spring Boot with a microservice architecture for this system that checks e that sends email, that collects sales, and that was kind of uh, a robust uh, use the Spring Boot. So our in our call start, 21 seconds for the app took a long time, at least for the business. So what we needed to do here, we just go and touch the framework layer and change this for something different like Spark Java. That is not the nice Spark Apache, it's a Spark Java if you haven't used it before for REST <laughs> uh, services. So we changed this in this layer, then it was just uh, the connection that we were using. We delete the Spring Boot and the only hard part to implement was uh, create a middleware because the Spring Boot had it, all these root uh, configuration files, but it was very easy. And this was an decision that it was like um, on Monday and we needed to implement it on Friday. So, okay, uh, good. We have this clean architecture. We can do this in at least one microservice at a time. So pretty cool in that way. Uh, something else, uh, it was the email provider. So our email provider, we were using SendGrid to send emails, but uh, the business says, no, I need more metrics, so I need to change to MailChimp. 
and we were like, okay, let's do that. So in when we go to our use case, it was like send mail use case. This was so it's clear that it's a use case. <laughs> uh, you just change your email provider, and also again you make some kind of different configurations, and that's it. You already changed the email provider with no problem. This happened also for us with the database. We were using MySQL, and the client says, guys, uh, we're migrating everything to GCP, so no more relational databases. Let's go to Firebase. And we were, OK, we change it again. We just run a script, and we change some configuration file, and that's it. It was pretty good for us. So with this uh, nice, uh, big uh, uh, modeling, we could have our bounded context well identified, and we could create our system in a way that these bounded contexts are accessible for everyone. And oh, for sure, <laughs> we also do our C4 models where we can go to the business and say, hey, a uh, person of the business, uh, let's talk about uh, the requirements, or oh, let's talk about the sales, and just go for with them, and, and they could give us their clear minds and what were they expecting from this bounding context. So it was a very challenge considering that they were never working with Agile and never ever even considering what bounding context they have it. So uh, in here, because I'm running out of time, I want to tell us a little bit uh, what do we learn to maintain this domain center architecture and how, uh, as my knowledge, <laughs> we rock it. And it was using some pretty basic things like ADRs. Because, you know, I don't even remember what I ate yesterday. I ADR is a very good tool to keep this in the paper, at least in the virtual paper, but also the testing. I hope many of you know some uh, ARG unit where you can test your architecture. This help us to maintain this. So if I don't want to uh, uh, anything to access to the info layers or each service has to be independent, you can test in a way that no one can violate those rules. So it's super good to have this in your team, even when you have a, a different uh, point of view, because most of us came from a background of MBC. So you change to this new DDD uh, clean architecture, and you need to, OK, I need to re remember which are the uh, key points of this and how to maintain it. Another part that it was super cool for us to involve the business was the use of fitness functions. Uh, because we usually, in our process, we do a lot of uh, unit tests, integration, acceptance, but the fitness function really helped us to connect with the business. Uh, you see here the chaos monkey, if you don't know it, from Netflix that can randomly terminate instance in production to assure that we develop a system that must be resilient to failures. But some fitness function that we really connect with the business was performance. For example, I said before that we really needed to um, increase the performance for us in the boot of a system that it took 20 seconds and now took 20. For me, 20 seconds maybe is nothing, but for the business, it was very critical. So this performance test that is a fitness function help us to keep that. The security analysis, like, okay, keep in mind that you shouldn't like uh, put your credentials out in production, please don't. <laughs> and there the also is a, um, a fitness function and finally the business metrics that i wanted to show you like how we really communicate with the system uh in a way that can be helped so in here you see a board that is super green and you see some numbers but what do those numbers mean what do those colors mean well in the first one uh, you just are seeing how many uh, payments are being created and how many payments are being paid and everything and you see green why is green who put the green well the business the business put the green in here and if it decreases, what happened? OK, it goes yellow or goes red. And we have this usually in our office in a big full screen when the business is walking and says, oh my gosh, that is super uh, yellow. What happened? 
So you have an instant feedback like, hey, can you check it? And you are checking with them and they can understand a little bit how are we working and how we can improve, okay? So, and at, to finalize this, uh, I wanna show you what was our main output. We did a, a roll off of 30 moles with 2,000 daily users and we have 100% success until now. I could say 99 because we are still working there, but that's it, my story. <laughs>